Hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here today to present the 2019 Geneva Summit International Women's Rights Award. This year, the 25 human rights groups that sponsor the Geneva Summit have chosen to recognize the extraordinary effort of Somali-born social activist Nimko Ali, a leading advocate for the global eradication of female genital mutilation known as FGM. Three million girls across the globe are estimated to undergo FGM every year, mostly in African countries. In 2010, Nimko Ali co-founded Daughters of Eve, a survivor-led organization that works to protect girls and young women at risk of FGM. Mrs. Ali herself is a survivor of FGM. I was, and was, she was subjected to the procedure at the age of seven. A few years later, she had to undergo reconstructive surgery after being rushed to hospital with kidney failure, an event that nearly killed her. Today, Mrs. Ali is a prominent social activist. Her past experiences have propelled her to become an outspoken advocate for the eradication of FGM. Her holistic approach to activism involves supporting victims of FGM, providing resources for those at risk, and working with policymakers to formulate concrete plans of action to combat the practice. The work of Mrs. Ali has helped transform the approach to ending FGM with the goal of directly empowering African women who work in communities where the practice is prevalent. By empowering and funding African women who are exposed to different realities on the ground, she works to ensure that activism to end FGM are, has a truly tangible impact for those who need it most. Through her ceaseless efforts, Mrs. Ali empowers women all around the world by illuminating the importance of gender-based violence with the broader context of gender inequality. As she has said, I quote, ending FGM is key to us, achieving a world where all are free. While girls are at risk, our world can never prosper. And so, on behalf of the Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy, I'm proud to present our 2000, oh, sorry, 2019 Women's Rights Award to Nimco Ali for, as the inscription reads, giving a voice to girls and women at risk of genital mutilation and protecting their physical, mental, sexual, and reproductive health rights. Mrs. Ali, please come forward to receive your award. Thank you. 
the start that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm incredibly honored to be receiving this award and ultimately I want to say that this is on behalf of the African women who are risking their lives on a day-to-day -day basis to end FGM and ultimately the African women who came before me and gave me the platform in order to push these things forward. Sorry, that was, I'm sorry she's gone. <laughs> um, so my name is Nimko Ali and I'm one of the 200 million women globally living with the consequences of FGM. As brutal as the act is, it's also very organized. The key reason to why I started my activism was just to change one word. I sat in meeting rooms, I sat in committee rooms, and I sat in forums where everybody kept on talking about eradicating FGM as though it was some kind of virus. Through my own experience, I knew that FGM was organized and I knew that a lot of people benefited from it. So I started um, Lord Aviv with two other survivors in order for us to understand that FGM was a form of violence against women and girls. For thousands of years, women on the African continent, parts of the Middle East and India have suffered the silent gender genocide, as I like to call it. Um, there is, um, sorry, in the Middle East, the silent genocide. In the name of honor and culture, this was um, dismissed. Um, there is no honor in the mutilation of girls, and there is no culture about the denial of the basic human rights of children. FGM was meant to break me. I was meant to be scared and, um, after I was cut. I was meant to behave, and I was meant to um, st um, stay in my corner. But as we know, um, well-behaved women sol um, um, seldom make history. The international community for too long has seen the issues, um, is issues like FGM and child marriage as something that is due to ignorance and not the slow gender genocide, as I said. For 200, um, for, for, um, and for 200 million women um, living with the consequences of FGM and those that we've lost, I'm really grateful that, we're able, that I'm able to accept this today. Between now and 2030, there are 70 million girls at risk of FGM. That is the population of the United Kingdom right now, 70 million girls. 70 million girls that could be the future of Africa, that could be the saving grace of a whole continent. I believe that the mere fact that I'm standing here today shows that we can save these girls from FGM. I believe that if we stand together and seek the protection of the human rights of the most vulnerable, we can live in an FGM-free world. To achieve this, I do not need you um, to start a campaign, but I want you to stand in solidarity with the women on the front line. Women like Jaha Dukure in the Gambia, who was also herself uh, subjected to FGM when she was a week old, then sold into sexual slavery, also known as child marriage. Josephine from Kenya, who has saved over a thousand girls from FGM. These women are doing incredible work on zero funding, and we need to change that. Um, progress, uh, progress is sorry. Progress is possible, but is not given. In my family, we have ended FGM because I spoke up and because we acted. In Africa, we can do that if we allow those who truly want to speak up the platforms that I have. I thank you again for this award, and it means the world to me. But rethinking the way that we fund women and the organisation I'm just about to start, called the Five Foundation, is what we really need to do. What does rethinking the way that that we fund women actually mean? It means that we really need to restructure the way that we give to women who are directly impacted by FGM and those who are saving girls, leveraging resources globally to build foundations for women to really change the value of girls on the continent of Africa. Right now, only 50 pence is given to every woman who's affected by FGM on a global level, and 700, um, 700 pounds is given to everybody affected or living with the consequences of HIV. I think this gross underfunding is due to gender. A lot of things are due to gender, but that agrees. <laughs> um, and gross on the fund is due to gender. The, the 70 million girls that are living with the consequences of FGM have an average age of five when they will be cut. I have spoken on platforms with world leaders and I've spoken on platforms with community members. And one of the key things is that People talk about things like poverty. People talk about things like access to water and access to education. Poverty doesn't just happen, just like FGM doesn't just happen. Poverty is an organized injustice. If you cut 70 million girls, that means there's 70 million less um, active citizens within your communities. There are 70 million um, less tech, um, leaders within your communities. There are 70 million less people within your communities that can really change things. So I had some incredible slides, which I was too late to send to you all. Um, 
so what can I say? Um, I really don't want to take the 10 minutes because I feel incredibly honored to accept this prize, but I also know that um, there are women who deserve um, I, I can know th th this surprise more m more than I do, and I want to just tell you um, one story from um, 45 years ago about a woman called Edna Aden, who is one of my greatest heroes. She's a Somaliland um, activist, and she. Um, in, in the late 70s and early 80s, stood outside the UN High Commission in, 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 in New York in order to lobby the men inside to say that FGM was a, was a human right violation. FGM was seen as a health issue, which was defined by, by the World Health Organization as the, um, as, as the non-medical cutting um, of, 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 um, of the female anatomy. The decision of the world's communities to define FGM as a health issue has led to 140 million women being cut since between now and the late um, and the late 70s. FGM is not a um, a health issue. F FGM is a human rights issue, and I hope in accepting this award and in being amongst these incredible um, activists that we can take that forward. And I want senior politicians and people in the West to stand alongside my government who've been incredible within the United Kingdom. We have committed 50 million to help end FGM and fund the Africa-led movement. 50 million is not gonna go far. We um, 50 million is not going to go far. We need 100 million, we need more, and we need you all to work together and say that if we put money in the hands of African women, we can really achieve real and effective change. And um, on that note, I just want to thank you all again, and thank you for the scarf, and I'm incredibly honoured.